they have fashion design degree they look at the rams models they come up with the design ideas design in your illustrator that's how their design process is so, so the style comes from your rams your runway they are going to create now even in the fashion space there are some custom shops which are like okay every single dress that you're going to buy is probably going to be custom growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing this approach needs alignment among people processes and technologies so if you're a business owner operations or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors you're tuned into the right podcast welcome to the WBS podcast where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority now here is your host Sam Gupta Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at Independent ERP and Digital Transformation Consulting Firm Elevate IQ. There are nuances right within the ERP system such as most processes being driven using size, style, season, brand and color. But then the integrations are super involved too. you have integration as thick as plm wms and a designer toolbox such as adobe illustrator then the supply chain processes are fairly unique as well with the needs for vendor collaboration sampling and order placement during r&d so which are the systems designed for the apparel industry if you have guessed exanta then you are right In today's episode we invited a panel of industry experts for a live discussion on LinkedIn to conduct an independent review of Aptine Accenta's capabilities. We covered many grounds including its unique capabilities for the apparel industry and why this industry has different needs for an ERP and integrations. Finally we covered why there are only few solutions available in this industry unless you plan to use several add-ons on top of the horizontal ERP systems with that let's get to the conversation hello everyone welcome to today's show and if you are joining for the first time this is part of our industry series for which we meet every tuesday at 5:30 pm eastern we always review one solution from the ERP community and for today we are going to be reviewing Aptine Accenta which is a very unique solution so we are going to have a lot of fun discussing that especially around the challenges in uh, this industry before we do that we are going to start with everybody's intros i am going to start with my intro if you don't know me sam kupta principal at elevate iq elevate iq is the independent erp e-commerce and digital transformation consulting firm On that note I am going to move to Andy for his intro. Thank you Sam. Uh my name is Andy Pratico. I've been involved in ERP software for manufacturers all my life. I've worked all over North America and I actually teach people how to uncover the truth about ERPs before they buy. So thanks again for having me attend Sam and I'm looking forward to learning about this one. and this is going to be so much fun uncovering the truth about this particular ERP and the <laughs> and we have uncovered like what now 400 ERP I solutions got well no <laughs> one per week so we're well over 100 but 100 uh, okay yeah. okay okay i'm over quoting right now thanks for uh, calling me out there that's okay uh, <laughs> okay um so we are going to start with the quick brief of the solution where they fit and also going to compare this with some of the other aptin solutions i don't think we have done a lot of aptin we have covered some of their manufacturing solutions if i believe correctly and you can tell me if i'm off here i think we have covered probably one or two we definitely have covered their corporate strategy that i remember so we are going to do a quick refresher of their corporate strategy and they are very 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 similar to infor okay uh each of their solution is very similar to infor the way their corporate strategy is there are some layers in terms of how they are moving 
uh, they were owned by Vista Equity. So obviously, anything that you are going to see, including their branding colors, are going to be inspired by Vista Equity, which is yellow. Okay. So everything, the way Vista Equity operates, the way they like to sort of consolidate the companies in their portfolio, obviously super sharp guys, there's no question about that. So they have very similar approach to how Infor operates because Infor was started by finance people. <laughs> they have very interesting way of looking how software world is supposed to work. So again, Aptine has very similar market strategy in general. Uh, with Infor, Aptine likes to operate in slightly smaller uh, uh, patches than Infor. Infor is going for much bigger deals in general. I mean, that's what they are interested in. They are not necessarily interested in um, five, ten million dollar shops anymore. Uh, they want more bigger and bigger. Um, Aptine is very interesting in general overall in terms of the layers that they like to set. And they have been growing a lot in the Europe market. That's been their, their sweet spot in the last couple of years. Um, Aptine right now is very similar to Infor, where Infor was probably 10 years back in terms of their acquisition strategy. Then they acquired so many that they cannot keep up with them. Uh, Aptine acquired a lot more in the last few years, the way Epicor was acquiring or ECI was acquiring. So Aptine, the way they like to approach, at least as of today, they are going for very tiny uh, patches in the Europe market, which has been a growing market for them. And in the Europe market, you have very, very, very unique nuances where they can win easily and they don't have to compete with companies like Infor, Apicor here in North America. So that's what they were focusing on. Now, let's talk about the retail market. It's the beast, okay? And I don't even know if you can really position a real ERP in the retail market because Retail market, the way it works is very unique in general. Okay, for the most part, for retail companies, the ERP is really going to be their OMS or it's going to be the POS layer. The way the companies operate, the way their teams are set up, the ERP is hardly the reporting, financial reporting layer, operational layer is very rarely an ERP. Now, in retail as well, there are different patches. For example, uh, if you talk about the fashion apparel, very different ball game. <laughs> very, very, very different ball game in general. Okay, so this particular solution is positioned for the fashion apparel space, the way it works. And there are hardly two solutions in the market that probably have capabilities. If you talk about the full blown capabilities, unless you have like $2 million and want to spend in integration, then it's a different deal. But for the most part, if you talk about the fully packaged solution, it's probably going to be in 4 M3, and that is typically targeted for larger accounts. And Aptine Accenture is probably going to be the second best competitor that you're going to get. Obviously, NetSuite is probably the third one, but then you are looking at a lot of add-ons in general. Uh, you might find all of the add-ons that an apparel company are going to require in the NetSuite ecosystem, uh, just because they have been winners. There's a lot of them. Uh, in general, in the e-commerce space, in the apparel space, Net NetSuite does really well. And they have some of the modern uh, PLM systems. And for when you look at these apparel companies, the PLM is their bread and butter. Okay. They design in the Adobe Illustrator and then they want to go to PLM. Uh, and if they cannot figure out how to do that. So and the, just to give you a little insight, for them, their CAD system is going to be Adobe Illustrator. Can you believe this? Okay. They are going oh. to have bombs inside. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy the way if you look at how their processes are set up, very, very, very unique. Uh, it's just mind blowing the way industry works. So it's very unique in general. If you try to <laughs> install Microsoft in this patch, good luck with that. Or any other ERP for that matter. I mean, they are really going to struggle in general. And most people who don't really understand this space are probably going to do that. So very, very unique, very prop and very unique uh, industry in general. Overall, in terms of the solution capability, this is a very small solution in general. It's not supposed to be very large. So in terms of handling the workload, I don't think this is supposed to be installed in very large accounts. So again, it's supposed to be 10, 15-ish uh, million dollar company. I don't know how long they can go. Now, there is another layer there in terms of the apparel manufacturing and apparel retail. Those two are very different things. Okay, Apparel manufacturing is even different, Okay, the way their uh, processes are. 
retail, you still have merchandising, you still have planning, you still have very involved WMS processes, but manufacturing gets involved, even even more involved. NetSuite wins in sort of the e-commerce distribution space than light manufacturing. But if you get into the hardcore apparel manufacturing, that's where these solutions shine and you are probably going to have a couple of options, which is probably in 4M3 and this one. In 4M3, not sure if that is going to be for pure play retail because the way the planning cycles are set up might not be as great fit. So there are a lot of different layers in terms of how these industries are set up. Uh, so I'll pause there, Andy. Uh, you can tell me if you have any sort of experiences, commentary. Well, just generally speaking, when you have ERPs that are designed for the fashion or the apparel industry, the biggest difference is the fact that they don't. Their part numbers are consistent, but each part number has size, style, and color. So therefore, it explodes. It's almost like a configurator. It explodes into variations of the same part number. Yeah, so anybody can flag Andy you that you don't belong from fashion because you are calling this as part number. They don't call it as part number. They call it as style number. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so for them, it's going to be a style, and then they also don't have sort of the skew. They have the skew, but they call it as PLU, which is called price lookup code. Uh, okay, and in retail industry, uh, PLU term is very common in general. It's not one-to-one correlation with your SKU because you are going to have a style number. A style has a lot of different variables in terms of the way style works. There are some some processes that are driven by style. But for the most part, most are probably driven by your PLU, uh, which is going to be another layer on top of your style. And it's almost like similar, to, very similar to matrix inventory. But in my mind, it's just right. much deeper than that. Any other uh, uh, comments, Andy? No. No? Okay. All right. So here, typically we cover many different, uh, you know, layers in our uh, reviews. Number one always is going to be market positioning. And we are probably doing a better job overall with slides as well now. We are sort of, you know, calling out different segments that we are covering. So we typically cover four different segments. It is going to be market positioning. Then we look at the any sort of PR releases that they have done. We sort of try to, uh, you know, connect the dots uh, with those releases. Then we look at the demos and the user reviews. So we are going to segment this in those sections. So here we are looking at their market positioning. And there are some very interesting commentary that we could find in the way they are positioning. And this is where you are going to see very, very, very specific terms that might not be available with the other ERP system. For example, here they are saying our PLM integration with Adobe Illustrator. And again, this is supposed to be for designers. And these designers are very, very deep into fashion design they have fashion design degree okay they look at the rams models uh, they come up with the design ideas design in your uh, you know illustrator that's how they are design processes so very 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 different in general and anybody who has been in the fashion industry they would probably be able to relate with what i am talking about so the style comes from you know your rams your runway they are going to create now even in the fashion space there are some custom shops which are like okay Every single dress that you're going to buy is probably going to be custom, okay? But there are also standardized shops which are going to have, you know, product lines similar to your car. They don't do as custom. In general, the more custom you are going to have, uh, good luck with that business model uh, because it's only going to scale so much. And that's why, Andy, and I don't know whether you find this funny or not or whether you travel to any sort of developing world, uh, you know, typically in the developing world, you are going to find all sort of colors, all sort of variety, okay? But when you walk in the U.S. or Canada, obviously here, uh, you know, companies have to watch for every single dollar. The number of colors, the number of styles, the options that you are going to find for you are going to be very, very limited. Okay, and if you are sort of off from the mainstream, for example, Andy, let's say if you wear size 14 for some reason, okay, or whatever, okay, it's going to be really rare to find that because they cannot sell that. So they need to look at the... (laughs) So it's 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 funny the way industry works, but you know um, some shops are going to be custom, very custom, but eighty percent of them are probably going to have very standard product lines in general. Commonly, the custom are you are you talking about custom products specifically, or are you talking about taking a standard shirt and putting a logo on it? So both cases could be relevant, right? So in some cases, let's say if you go to a real fashion fashion shop, okay, Mm -hmm. the way girls think about apparel. A business is very different, right? I mean, for them, everything has to be unique. Every dress has to be unique. 
if it is not unique then their friends are probably not going to like them right uh, <laughs> for guys it's different right for us blue or black or whatever gray maybe so for us options are different so so that's why when you look at the real real fashion category they are going to have a lot more variety in general so the way some shops work is they are going to have a core style and they are simply going to be let's say they might have a mesh that they might might vary or they might have another fabric that they might uh, you know vary with that but the base style is going to be same so there are some shops that sort of operate that style and that's almost like you know configured to order okay right uh, business model but there are shops which are going to be okay i am picking a brand new style from my ram because this cut is really famous and i am going to design only 10 pieces if i sell right. that great otherwise i'm going to move on <laughs> so depending upon the shop and very depending... expensive exactly obviously any custom uh, is going to be expensive but people pay for that and the and some companies are okay with that business model but i don't know whether you followed the news of stitch fix okay stitch fix was the most custom shop that you are ever going to have in general okay that was one of the biggest in the apparel space and they somehow figured the formula that you can be custom as well as big <laughs> okay wow. but it, 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 they are struggling uh, let's put it this way uh, you know everybody has to standardize after a certain point otherwise uh, numbers don't add up uh, <laughs> um, okay so here let's get back to the the comments here so here our plm integration with adobe illustrator takes the user experience to a whole new level so that's right as well again very different workflow for the designer for merchandiser for planners as well as who else am i missing in terms of the role probably procurement as well they get involved in the whole process aptine believes that plm fashion software should enable creative teams to stay creative that is right again the comparison here is going to be cat software for manufacturing they are designing inside cad here they are designing inside their plm or the adobe the, the whole creative process even though they are sort of designing like the ux uh, of the product but this still goes through the same design uh, mindset and philosophy and output of this is, is still going to be some sort of bomb that you are going to be sending to your manufacturer um, to the samplers that you might be working with so here this powerful design plugin for adobe illustrator works with accenture and the plugin is going to be very comparable to your cat plugins the, the way cat plugins work so here we are looking at okay design and then push it to your uh, erp if you are doing some sort of manufacturing if this goes to vendor then you are going to have a live collaboration workflow with your vendors as well and that's a nightmare overall in terms of process perspective when you are going to be dealing with third party most apparel companies are probably going to be dealing with a lot of vendors uh, so their r and d workflow is very thick as well even if they are going to be simply distributor retailer so for retailers their r and d workflow is going to be far deeper because the design is controlled by your retailers you know manufacturers are simply manufacturing overseas most likely china uh, but for the most part design is controlled by the retailer even the though they are simply retailing manufacturers might be different because they might have in house manufacturing capabilities so their manufacturing workflow is going to be far thicker in general now here fashion market obviously is completely different as we are seeing and that's why the erp needs are going to be very 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 different the quest plm plm is must if you don't have plm i don't know how you will be able to pull off the workflow and that integration is very thick okay thicker than your manufacturing integration the amount of exchange that you need to have between your plm as well as your uh, erp and again that's why we had very unique uh, erp system in this space and by the way other name i'm going to throw is going to be blue cherry which is very well known in the apparel space there are other ones i mean now aptin aptin acquired this one as well so this was a very fragmented market in general now aptin is trying to go after all, all of those players and they are trying to acquire all of the plm solutions as well as the erp solution and the biggest sweet spot that aptin is going to have is they are trying to integrate all of these um uh, solutions and trying to provide the packaged solution the way in four approaches the market epicor approaches the market uh, or eci approaches the market so here the sampling workflow is going to be very thick as well uh, and then procurement procurement gets very involved and again for procurement it's very tricky because they are dancing around okay typically uh, with retail companies and the merchandisers and the designers they have the most clout in general okay and the reason for that is because they are planning for the retail and the products that are really selling are selling because of them 
because if he can retain the best designer, most likely they are going to have really good sales. And they also sort of position the product at the right shelf. Now that's uh, an art as well. Okay, they need to figure out, okay, which store, because they need to understand the demographics at a much deeper level. So even if you have the best shirt in a town where nobody wants that, <laughs> that that's tricky, right? So again, the planning goes very deep as well. So procurement is going to play a very important role in general in this space as well. And then they design collaboration. So some of the things that you're going to notice overall in this particular space is, for example, launch new products, tech packs in Illustrator. Can you believe this, guys? Okay, you are literally launching there. For ERP guys, it might be scary because they have never seen the pretty pictures in their entire life. <laughs> and now they are working inside Illustrator. Create search and edit designs in Illustrator. Create, develop, and update bombs in Illustrator. Can you believe this? It's very, very, very hard to have that kind of integration. So obviously, f is providing a lot more in general. Uh, directly access fabric, trim, other PLM libraries. And these PLM they get very, very, very deep overall in terms of the number of options that you are going to have for each of the design. So you need all of that to be able to plan your product, to be able to plan your samples and finally finalize your product that you really want to manufacture or sell. So again, the process is very thick. Save time, uh, reduce errors, enhance communication. Obviously, communication is key here. With vendors, if you are not able to do that, you are going to have real financial loopholes. Uh, and it becomes very tricky if you're going to have fragmented systems here in this business. What else do I have here? Create new colors, Andy, can you believe this? Okay, so you are creating new colors as well. Uh, sometimes they need to come up with new colors because the colors, existing colors might not go well with the style that they might be working on. Again, rocket science, I'm not qualified to uh, touch that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, designers typically have a design degree. They do master's degree in that. It's interesting they mentioned bi-directional Illustrator PLM synchronization. So it's really hooked into Adobe tight. Yes. Uh, by the way, this is one tool. Obviously, designers love this because it's just easy, right? This is probably one of the most adopted. Uh, but the other PLMs are probably going to enforce their own sort of uh, you know, design tool. Designers don't like that. Sometimes what you could do is you might be able to create from here export and then import in this one that could be another possibility but here you are really working inside illustrator and then you have the end-to-end -end integration now let's talk about integration okay it sounds fancy on paper but it might never work as you like because the integration may fail for the use cases that you may have or integration might not be supported for your use cases so overall the marketing pitch may sound great once you start using it, you might run into challenges. Now, here we have, okay. Anything else, Andy? Any other comments no. on this? No? Okay. So some press releases here. So here, uh, some more market positioning, I guess. So the key elements of fashion, and these are the elements for the enterprise architecture. You are going to have a PLM, must, must have. Okay. Uh, you could have probably the siloed systems, and that's why sometimes the retail enterprise architecture get really complicated. You are probably going to have 20 different fragmented systems and everybody's sort of going to be dancing around <laughs> systems uh, because of that fragmented experience. So obviously it's very hard uh, to design the retail enterprise architecture, but in general, you are at least going to have a PLM, you are going to have vendor portal, uh, you are going to have ERP, WMS, as well as the shop floor control only if you are doing manufacturing if you are not doing that, probably you don't need that, but you are still going to be needing the other things. Uh, EDI is very common in the B2B scenarios. Not all retailers are going to be doing B2B, depending upon their business model, but some do. If they are selling to, let's say, big box retailers, then they might need the EDI capabilities as well. Now, this is the press release. So this is obviously a very recent acquisition. They had acquired this in 2021. So here, this is the acquisition of Accenta itself. So again, I don't think it's been more than two years right now, right, Andy? And they acquired everything from there. So they did not integrate anything as such. I think everything came integrated. So most likely they must have improved the branding and, and marketing. And Vista Equity in general and App Team, they are really good at that. Which uh, countries do you find this product popular? You're saying Europe. So it's specific countries or all across? My understanding of App Team, where they are putting a lot of gas is in the DAC countries which is going to be slightly more eastern europe 
Okay. Uh, yeah, that's where I think they are. That's their sweet spot because those countries are very unique um, in terms of their taxation reporting. So they have sort of both play. They obviously have the packaged offering, but then they have country localization as well. So they don't have to compete with the big boys. Here, they are talking about design, sourcing, production, and distribution. Those four are probably going to be big pillars. Now, here, the user count is always very religious topic, very interesting in terms of discussion. Uh, and sometimes the customers don't really understand this, right? So 41,000 users in general is very low. Okay, these are the, like the real users. Okay, so let's say my understanding of these installations is going to be probably 10 on average. Okay, 20 is probably going to be a stretch. So obviously, this is a very small system in general. Uh, you know, and let's say, I don't know, are they going to have 4,000 customers or are they going to have 1,000 customers? Um, 1,000 customers, 41 average. I could believe that. <laughs> So that's probably is going to be my gut check here. Uh, what do you think, Andy? Well, users, this is not customers. Nope, this nope. is, yeah, total Make delivery that, users. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty, but I mean, you know, it's a very targeted product though too. So it's audience isn't that large. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, so I think you are right. So there might be some bigger customers that might be on it. And that's why, you know, that might be biased. So let's say, if they could figure out, you know, five large customers because somebody's brother-in-law works for somebody, right? <laughs> well, like you say on your little, little window on the bottom right, uh, 41,000 users is like two SAP installations. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Probably one SAP installation, to be honest. One right? in some cases, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, users is very subjective in general, but the target market that they are targeting is very small. But Andy, I think you had a really good point there that their target market is very niche. Apparel, I think they are selling in some of the other verticals as well. It's not just the apparel and fashion. They are also selling in other retail-centric verticals. We'll, I'm probably going to have slides for that as well. My understanding is that they were selling in some of the retail equipment space, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So very similar to retail, I guess. Yeah. Now, when you are going to be looking at uh, the UI, typically Vista, the way they operate, they are probably going to be improving the integration. They are going to be improving the marketing, but they typically do not re-architect the whole application. It's very rare that they are going to make that kind of large investment with the product because their goal, the way their business model is, they want to win in the professional services. They also win in the support. So even though they are acquiring, their goal is to keep everything inside. So they are not going to be investing a lot in the product innovation. Not sure, you know, what is going to be their overarching. I don't know whether they take sort of the five years timeline. On some of these products, you know, five years, they are going to juice it out. And by the time the other products catch up uh, with these products in terms of the functional capabilities, then they are probably going to be getting rid of these. Products. I don't know if that is the mindset, but that matches with your private equity timeline because you are looking for the return in five years. So it makes complete sense. I mean, I would do it if I had money. <laughs> so that could be the mindset. But I mean, overall, the way uh, Vista Equity and FT and they like to uh, operators, they are probably going to taking uh, you know five to ten years timeline. They are rebranding, um, refreshing the marketing positioning because that's what customers care for. And then they are going to be integrating so that sales is going to be slightly easier. Um, but uh, if you are a customer, obviously you need to figure out you know how the experience is going to be, whether you are going to have the operational efficiency or not. When you are small, you cannot really afford to spend in the integration dollars. This is gold. This is pure gold in my mind but if you're bigger obviously you might struggle with the platform and you are going to be fairly restricted in terms of the kind of options that you are going to have because the mar this is a very closed ecosystem very closed uh, product so you are relying on aptin for pretty much everything so here again the product design psychology so overall the various even their sales orders are going to be very different Okay, everything is driven by division, style, brand, seasonality, uh, you know, color. So very in the terms and Andy, you were referring to parts, right? So here, ah, RM style, <laughs> RM division, okay, bomb configuration, RM color, 
and you know if somebody has looked at any other ERPs, they will not be able to connect relate with it because they are looking for sort of part number bomb number you know that's what they are looking for so again very 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 different space the Industry only specific language or terminologies exactly exactly the only common language that i am seeing here is the bomb <laughs> And, you know, I don't know why they are using it, to be honest. Some companies might use something else, I guess, because they just do not see themselves as more of the uh, manufacturing or retail business. They see themselves as more of a fashion business, which is a different mindset. If you don't have any other comment, Andy, I can move to the next one. Yeah, that's fine. So here, one of the things that you are going to notice with Aptin products, because these are all acquired products in general. So the way they might appear the experience is going to be very different when you are going to move from your WMS to your ERP to your PLM. Because what they have done is, even if they have acquired these products, it is very aligned with how Aptine likes to operate. And that's why they were sort of interested in this one. So what Accenta must have done, they must have acquired these products over the period of time. And the reason for that is because it makes winning a deal easier. That's why they are acquiring these products and they have pre-integrated. So it's just easier to compete with the likes of SAP, Microsoft, Oracle, because those are obviously very horizontal solutions in general, the way they like to operate in the market. So here, every piece that you are going to have as part of your bundle, that is going to appear very different. Obviously, that's going to be very different from the experience perspective as well, because when users are going to be switching from your PLM to your ERP, ERP to your shop floor, uh, the experience is going to be different, okay? But if you really think about it, okay, this is what best of breed architecture is, okay? Whatever the other companies are trying to position, hey, I'm going to sell you this SaaS, and that's going to be your best of breed architecture. The only difference in between this and that is going to be, in this particular case, at least you are going to have some pre made integration. Now, again, you still have to uh, check every single workflow in the field to make sure that integration is going to work for your use cases. Pre-baked integration does not mean that it's always going to work for your use cases. And even if you are going to be replacing one component out of this one, and let's say if you are going to be replacing with your PLM, good luck with that. Because that is going to throw the whole state of the enterprise architecture and you might have issues in that. So if you are buying everything from Aptine and for Apicore, uh, you know, obviously you are probably going to get better results. As soon as you start replacing those components, the architecture is probably going to struggle. Any comments, Andy? No. No? Okay. So here are the other things that you're going to notice, even for the shop floor display, that the terms are going to be very different. So here we are looking at gross pay. And, you know, now you are going to be thinking that why do you have this on the shop floor display? Why do you care for that? Sometimes you might not might need that because ACM processes are sort of, uh, you know, embedded as part of uh, your shop floor workflow as well. That's why you are seeing this. And then you have the place rate, you have the SMB. Uh, so very, very, very different workflow overall, the way the whole uh, processes are uh, set up. And here you can see this is your shop floor control. And here we are talking about the gross pay. We are talking about hours. We are talking about piece rate. And piece rate is going to be obviously based on the material as well as labor. But you are not going to have as many layers for labor the way you are going to have in the other ERP system. So obviously, this can get you started. But when you look at the real uh, you know, costing workflows, when you need to do the deep casting, you might not get that. You might get a lot from the merchandising perspective, planning perspective, PLM, design. But when you get into the real deep operations and finance, when you are looking for operational efficiency, you might not get all of that in these solutions. Now, this is where the PLM is. And even in the PLM and the every field that you are going to see is going to be very different in general. Uh, so here you are looking at the color, color palettes. Uh, you are looking at the construction, the tag packs. Uh, the then you have the division, the subdivision, and these are like six variables that go together uh, overall in defining either the product or pre-product. Both of them are going to be de defined by your division, subdivision, design, uh, category. Uh, you know, it's going to be brand uh, and then the size, color, and style, I guess. So 
this is where and this is this is how the process starts so they, they are going to be looking at the ramp and they are going to find the design the design come your uh, comes in your plm or it is going to be in some sort of designer tool so you need to collaborate with, with your vendors you need to figure out other pieces that are going to be part of your bomb in general the, the way the bombs are going to be it's going to be very similar to your building material patch where you had the building information model so in general the bombs are very complex in general the way they work and they all are going to be at the size style brand level okay so we have some more commentary here so this is going to be again this is the scheduling workflow which is going to be very unique as well you know again if you try to compare this with any other industries uh, this is very 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 different overall from the user workflow perspective the way they design the way they are going to have their artwork the way their coloring is going to be the way their scheduling process is going to be whether you are looking at the r d phase or you are looking at the production phase again only if you are manufacturing then only you are going to have the production phase so very different in general now let's cover some reviews um any comments and the uh no. good okay so we have some user reviews here uh we are going to cover some so we are looking at this company 200 to 500 employees uh our guess was their average user is probably going to be 20 but here we are looking at roughly 200 to 500 employees so obviously some companies are going to be in sort of the upper small or lower mid market space where they are using this andy let me ask you a question so at the 200 500 employee level i think we are looking at roughly what 80 million dollar uh revenue uh well it depends on the market of course and what they're doing but 200 to 500 employees uh is this a manufacturer the most likely they are going to be oh, retailers okay. or apparel uh in this well, that's pretty, pretty big for a wholesaler um you are right i i would you know what were you saying how much i was thinking 80 million because the reason for that is because most zero? Of, yeah yeah, I, I would say high, higher. I'd say 200 plus. 200 plus. Interesting. Okay. So wholesale, you are right that wholesale is not going to have as many store employees. So right. in general, and their order size is going to be higher. Um, they are probably not going to have as many employees in the warehouse either. Uh, so I don't know, um, but they will have a lot more in sales, I guess uh because that the sales cycle is going to be far thicker but overall you're right i think uh if you are talking about and i don't know what percentage of wholesale this business is if it is going to be let's say 80 percent retail 20 percent wholesale then that's a different ball game than 80 percent wholesale 20 percent retail so i think we are fairly close i guess you know 80 to 200 maybe 150 i guess i don't know so somewhere around that that's what you're looking at but that's a decent size company in my mind Definitely. and the only reason why it might have worked for this company is because this is wholesale this is not a pure play retail because if you have pure play retail, then your business model is going to be far more complex. Uh, you are going to get far more transactions in general. So again, very interesting business model. So here they switched from Blue Cherry to Accenture, which is a very interesting move as well. So Blue Cherry is probably going to be in that sub $5 million space. And these guys are probably going to be in that uh, 10 to $50 million space. That's what my perception is of this solution. But here... They are probably using it for 150 or 200 maybe if nd is right here then we this is a very recent review so obviously you know slightly bigger than your blue cherry so that's your indication in terms of what their market positioning is here they are talking about improvements could be made on the following mass update filters could be expanded mass production cancel screen could use more filters missing options to view outbound edi raw data so one of the things that I have always highlighted in my review is always going to be one-to-end -end scenarios. And one-to-end -end scenario is where the differentiator is between your smaller system versus your mid-market systems, okay? Most of the mid-market systems, they decouple the process a lot more than your smaller systems. The smaller systems are going to flatten that data architecture, you know, to uh, save some resources. It's just going to be easier to use. So that's the real differentiator. So that's particular user is complaining about parallel exactly exactly so this particular user is complaining about mass 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 means one to end okay so you right. are probably using the wrong product and this is where you probably should be switching to in 4 m3 if you have grown to that extent and the reason why these guys are complaining maybe and you are right because they are probably at 200 million dollar 
<laughs> and now their CFOs are pushing, hey, you guys need to process in bulk. You need to segment your process tasks. Otherwise, we are never going to grow in that serial, serialized process. So probably they are trying to uh, figure that out. Blue Cherry support was awful. You get what you pay for. Sorry. But that's a reality. <laughs> yeah, everything's uh, relative anyways. You know? What's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. relative. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, in general, like, I mean, if you are buying Blue Cherry, you are probably paying 30000 in your implementation, probably paying 5000 per year in your solution. What do you expect? Oh, yeah. People don't work for free. <laughs> no. <laughs> what what uh, what's the price point of this Exenta system? Do you know? I am depending upon how many users you are looking at. If you're looking at two hundred million dollar, obviously, again, these guys are sort of cutting down in the implementation dollars, making a lot more in the licensing, and that's why they have this business model. Okay, so they are not going to charge as much for the implementation, but the implementation does not include the real consulting consulting. Okay, it's literally data dump the way it works, and then okay, figure it out. You know, and I'm own. going to be doing everything from my perspective because I have these three different systems. They have a lot of assumptions of the data model. So as long as you provide me data in that format, I'll upload for you. If you are not able to provide, that's your problem, uh, not my problem. So typically, that's how the implementation works. So Andy, I think from the, the way, there is one more layer that I did not touch on overall in a strategy. The way they like to approach, they can sell each of the parts individually as well. Uh, because they want to make money in integration. Okay, so if you talk to a team, they will say that, you know what? Okay, you care only for PLM? Okay, buy PLM from me. Uh, I know that your integration is going to fail tomorrow, so I'll be able to sell more. <laughs> so that's also the strategy that they take overall from the corporate perspective. But overall, I would say to your question related to the pricing, depending upon how big the company is, but if you are looking at this size company, I don't know, man. I mean, the I would say their user is probably going to be easily 150-ish. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I'm sure it's not cheap. I'm sure it's quite it's, expensive because it's, as a small audience, you got to make the money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing is cheap in this world, okay? No. <laughs> and uh, price is all subjective and, you know, you get what you pay for. So here, obviously, they are going to be lower than the big boys in general, overall, in terms of the license and fee. But again, you get what you pay for. Here, another 51 to 200 employees, another very similar customer. So very interesting, but these guys didn't like them at all. And this is from consumer goods. So the reason why they didn't like is because they are coming from consumer goods. If you sell the system to apparel, they will absolutely love it because they are not going to find a system that is going to be good for the apparel space. But if you sell to consumer goods, they will not appreciate uh, because it's very, very, very tailored to your, and that's where your flexibility of the business model comes. So let's say if you have a little retail, but you also have a little accessory business. Sometimes the accessory business could be very different in general, the way it works. Or you may have a toy uh, brand that is part of that, or you may have perfume brand. Uh, okay, then figure it out. I mean, you know, you are probably going to have a lot of challenges. in general. So here we are talking about consumer goods. They didn't like uh, at all. So here... This is also from 2022, so very recent review. Uh, they are saying, I would be hard pressed to identify something that we like about this software that is harsh uh, in general. Uh, maybe you are at the wrong place or maybe Aptin is the wrong place. Something screwed up here. Uh, it's probably not a fair review, but we'll still dig into if there are some elements that we need to touch into. So here we are talking about, while well, we have a laundry list of pain points with Accenture, what would be at the top of the least category is the level of customer support that is available from Accenture team. That is, I'm not sure if I really understand this review. I'll tell you why. Uh, because the other reviews, they have reported the customer support to be good, okay? And Andy, I don't know whether you have this kind of confirmation from any of your sources, but typically our team is known for good customer support in general. Okay, now if you're expecting consulting as part of your customer support, good luck with that. None of the happy vendors can provide that, okay? Support is not meant to be consulting. It's supposed to be your, okay, here is your problem and I have an article, I'll give it to you, figure it out. Uh, okay, that's what support means. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, that's your problem. That's why you need to hire consultants uh, who can help you with that. Well, it's interesting at the bottom, uh, Exenta uh, message to this customer saying, hey, give us a call. It'd be interesting to know if they did or if they fixed uh, some of their issues. 
it's very hard uh, to be honest and depending upon you know where the customer is sometimes it's just not possible because yeah. the things that they might be asking from the integration perspective you know depending upon the maturity of the customer some people are really informed in terms of what they can ask but most are not you mean there's going to be more than one lisa out there uh, <laughs> uh lisas could be different there are very 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 smart and sharp lisas obviously Yes. Uh, there are going to be some that might not this be. This one's a very right. sharp Lisa. Uh, this is a very sharp Lisa. You're right. <laughs> uh, the system is uh, counterintuitive, making our team, regardless of the experience level, reliant on the Accenture team. Um, again, I think their expectation was that they were expecting a little consulting. So obviously, you know, it's not right. It's not fair to have team in general. So we have invested a significant amount of time, resource, and customizing. And again, you have customized because you are trying to fit an apparel business into consumer goods business. And, you know, somebody screwed up here, either obtained because they oversold or you overbought. Sometimes customers are the problem because they are pushing that. No, 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 no. I want this. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes the salesman doesn't tell them that, you know, this is not really designed for your market. It's always both ways, Andy. You, you want to I mean, buy? Yeah. Yeah. Charge, charge. <laughs> we'll take care of that. We'll yeah. take care of you. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, so here, obviously, they customize. They shouldn't have customized. I mean, when you are buying this tailored package, you should not be customizing it at all. Uh, why no. are you customizing app team? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, without immediate improvement in the level of service that we are provided, uh, we'll be cutting ties and, okay, good for you. Uh, you shouldn't have bought uh, to begin with. Um, okay, some more comments here. So here, this is also coming from 2021. 51 to 200 employees, I can almost guarantee, Andy, this is probably going to be a happy review because this is coming from apparel and fashion. Right. So, right? So here they are talking about we had WMS integrated was awesome. Anybody's going to love that. <laughs> WMS integration with ERP is a big deal. And that's where money is, guys. Okay? PLM to your ERP, WMS to your ERP, that's where money is for in apparel business in general. So if that is coming prepackaged, that's pure gold for apparel business. Now they are talking about, I think, top level reporting would be helpful or advanced reporting. Reporting is going to be another area that is going to be probably limiting in the smaller system. And that is your sort of indicator whether this is a very large system or a small system. Again, you get what you pay for. The reason why they are cheaper is because you are asking to compromise in certain areas. So don't expect too much. So I don't think this is a problem with Eptin. This is a problem with the user itself with their expectations. We still pull multiple reports and have to combine them outside of Exenta. Now, this is a tricky part. In terms of the traceability and the linking in these systems is not going to be as friendly. Whether you talk about in Apicore, ECI, Infor, it doesn't matter. Linking is always a problem. You are not going to find the same linking that you are going to find in the products that were created from scratch. So you need to figure out what is best for you. Do you want a horizontal product that is going to have very streamlined experience from the transaction perspective, or you are hard pressed on your budget? <laughs> if you are hard pressed on your budget, you know, be happy with what you're getting uh, because this is the best you can get and you don't have to get into IT. But integrated WMS and the linking and traceability is probably going to be an issue. So obviously your admin cost in general, is going to be higher with this system because you are jumping around different system. You are sort of trying to link all of these data points in your Excel sheet. So again, you are not going to get the same ERP capabilities that you're going to get with SAP. But again, you are getting far more efficiency in your operational process. So you need to decide what your what are your critical, critical success factors and what really matters to your team and where you are going to have the highest amount of efficiency in your process. And you need to decide based on this. If your PLM WMS integration, the three package offering is a priority for you, this is a great system, no questions there. This is also apparel in fashion, 51 to 200 employees, I can almost guarantee that this is probably going to be happy user. But they are not saying quite, no, longer, no happy. longer happy. And that's okay. They might not be happy because of the changes in the in the companies. So they are not happy with the FTN support for some reason. So FAP 2022 support has got much worse in general when you are dealing with these smaller companies their support is going to be better okay in general that's how most smaller companies are whether you are working with a bar or whether you are working with a real and in my mind when you look at very small oem they are almost like a bar 
the way they like to think that you know they are going to customize the hell out of the system for you they'll provide a little consulting free selection you know I mean, sometimes they might do your laundry as well <laughs> so but it, you cannot expect that from mapteam there's no way in the hell they can do that because they need to be accountable for their financial results support has got much worse since you were acquired by aptin your support was always expensive but now they are unreasonable if not for the 2 million dollar we have expended over the 6 years guys that's a real money that's what most companies spend in an erp so if you are thinking that you are going to be spending 80000 dollars on your erp you are so wrong you cannot be more wrong that's a real amount this is what most companies spend whether you want to uh, plan for it or not that's up to you so be realistic with the expectation okay some more review andy if i yes, have five minutes them. keep going or yes, uh, I love them. so some more review here this is from 8 months ago here they are talking about fake cloud versus real cloud and i think we have done this in multiple reviews if you want to really test whether it is a real cloud or fake cloud uh, what you need to be looking at ask them to open multiple tabs if the system cannot work in multiple tabs then that's probably a legacy system it's not cloud native again do you care for cloud native not everybody has to care okay the first thing always has to be functionality whether it is going to work or not and how much it risk can you afford to have in a system that's always should be your priority but let's say if you're looking for cloud native this is not going to be cloud native okay so this is your way of testing so here they are saying and you will figure this out once you start using the system because you cannot open another tab where you are going to have salesforce like experience none of the legacy systems can support that whether you talk about um, some people have sort of big that experience like apicor <laughs> yeah. but it's even worse in my experience when you start using those systems so again depending upon the architecture design when you are going to have legacy architecture you can only get so much in general so maybe you want to test a little bit before you commit to a system whatever you want to do but obviously you know legacy is not going to be same as your cloud native well it's interesting they've only had the software for less than a year and uh, easy to learn navigate they're pretty happy they are pretty happy but they are not happy with the all windows within one application and and these no these shops and they are very cutting edge in general if they want to attract the designers i tell you okay these guys are one of the coolest people okay they are all going to be on mac and all of a sudden if you want them to use aptin good luck with that because they are not going to work for you <laughs> you know they are mac adobe designer <laughs> you know salesforce that's the kind of experience that they are seeking so that's a challenge in the apparel space at this point of time to be honest and that's why yes the user is pretty happy because it does the business but not from the experience perspective more comments and you or do you no, go for I mean, more you know obviously from your comments i'm i'm sh- it's probably a, a legacy type system that was migrated to the cloud and of course there's going to be some limitation exactly exactly yeah i mean these are all legacy systems there's no they might sell it as cloud native i don't know how aptin like to position you know depending upon the sales person that you are talking to some people are going to be super honest you know <laughs> some people are going to say no 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 it's all cloud it's all cloud native <laughs> so here under the saying custom orders every few years news comes out about a company that will do a laser body scan and then manufacture clothes that fit just you i would love to see the erp choices that power these companies <laughs> as none of them sir well this is on star wars that anders is talking about <laughs> yeah and honestly speaking i am completely fine with this idea as long as you can find an investor who is going to invest in this company because this business is probably not going to work hopefully the technology is going to work one of these days but it's it's very 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 hard to business model to pull off <laughs> thanks anders any any other comments on this one No, I mean uh I mean obviously the products got functionality specific for the apparel and and fashion market which makes it attractive for those types of companies. Oh, grid pricing. Yeah, so we have one more comment before we do our closing. Uh yeah. so I don't know if you want to cover this one I was thinking uh, if you had Well, apparel self, can you discuss grid pricing where a single shirt SKU will have grid of colors and prices and how this disaster is a disaster for non-apparel e ERPs used to do clothing. Well, yeah, that was kind of like what I mentioned earlier, uh commonly in the apparel industry, it's it, they have this grid uh that's an analysis of the same part number, yeah. size, style and color. And it 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 makes it very complex and almost impossible for standard vanilla type ERPs to handle it. 
So you do need either uh, an industry specific system like this or also a lot of customization. Exactly. And that's probably the reason why this industry is probably the stepchild of ERP, to be honest, because it's very hard to do both where you are going to be mainstream ERP yeah. as well as this functionality. It's probably not going to fly. So once you're in bed with this target, you that's what you do. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's why this is, and you are right, if you are pure play retail, this is great. Uh, but most businesses, they are trying to figure out how to diverse. That's also a challenge. So obviously, and that's why retail is very challenging in general. Any other comments? Andy? Thanks. Thanks uh, for the comments. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, again, it, it seems like a legacy type system, but it's got a good following. Generally speaking, a lot of the, yep. most of the comments are relatively positive. And, uh, you know, and it's probably targeted at good sized companies, too, from what from those reviews. Yeah, I completely agree, Andy. Thank you so much. Uh, any other comments? No. Awesome, guys. So that's it for today. If you joined for the first time, this was part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys are going to be here next week. We are going to come back with another topic or the solution. On that note, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you so much, Sam. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Anders. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests, and hopefully you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about Dave Chrysler, head over to the Chrysler.club. C-H-E-C-R-Y-S-L-E-R.C-L-U-B. If you want to learn more about ND Radico, head over to esoft.com. It's E-S-S-O-F-T.com. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. If anything in this podcast resonated with you and your business, you might want to check other related episodes, including the interview with Krissa Klein, who discusses the supply chain nuances of the apparel industry and its unique challenges. Also, the interview with Anant, Veer, and Ben, who shared their insights into how to create a robust supply chain for apparel business. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and reach us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you and I hope to get you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.